if it's okay with you, I'd like to start with asking you a bit about your childhood. Is that okay? Yep, that's fine, Kim. Could you tell me where you grew up and what was your childhood like? Basically grew up in Newry. Uh, my parents, my dad was from that Newry, the town, and my mother was from outside Newry in a Glen parish. Uh, so I spent a lot of my time obviously living here in Newry with my parents, but also a lot of my holidays and summers out in staying with my cousins out in Glen. Who was your sporting hero growing up? I suppose I had a couple of sporting heroes, um, predominantly Gaelic footballers to be honest. Um, the likes of Jack O'Shea, uh, Paddy O'Shea, Kevin Morn, uh, Maggie Sheehy, probably on the Gaelic front. Obviously the likes of George Best and Pat Jennings were yeah. pretty prominent names when I was growing up, so the likes of those guys also, because they achieved so much. Yeah. Um, who influenced you to get into sport? I think from an early age my family probably influenced me a lot to get into sport because uh, my mother came from a very prominent footballing family. Uh, where all her brothers and her uncles and her cousins all played football. Uh, my own older brothers played football as well, so I think it stemmed from the fact of my own family plus the influence from uh, from cousins and relations. I know you play Gaelic. Um, what age did you start playing Gaelic at? I started playing Gaelic probably as soon as I went into primary school nearly. Um, in those days there were, there were uh, competitions for primary three, Teams, so really that was the first properly proper competition that I played when I was in primary three. Um, did you think you were going to achieve as much as you did with dying at that age? or? No, I probably hoped that I would go on and achieve a lot. Yeah. But in those days, um, you know, all I wanted to do was just go out and play myself. When, as I got a little bit older, I probably had ideas. I would love to win a medal or love to win an All-Ireland. Um, but I think primarily it was just a case of wanting to go out and play and play for teams and win. And then as I got a little bit older, I started maybe to think about it would be great to win something, uh, particularly in All-Ireland, as Down had won a few All-Irelands in the 60s. Uh, but I suppose when I was younger, Down weren't that really a successful at county, so it was more hope than expectation. Yeah. Um, what was it like to win two All-Ireland finals? Fantastic achievement, uh, just as I said there in the last question, as I got a little bit older, um, I think I started to th hope that it would be great to go on and win an All-Ireland. Yeah. It's not something that a lot of counties from the north had managed to achieve, so it was always something in the back of your head that you wanted to, to achieve. And then when I started playing for Down, managed to get selected for the senior team, it was always something that you were hoping to do. That's what you trained for every year, to get into the championship, to stand a chance of winning the All-Ireland. So, when it, when it first happened, it was like a dream come true for me because it was something that I'd thought about a long time when I was younger. And as I said, when I got older, it was something then that you were hoping and striving to achieve and putting in a lot of time and effort. So, uh, great relief when it happened uh, and, and very lucky. Yeah. Um, what was it like to play in front of 80,000 people and did you get nervous playing in front of big crowds? Uh, it, it is a, it is a nerve wracking experience uh, that the first time maybe when you run out into Croke Park for an All Ireland final or an All Ireland semi final even when the when the, when the Croke Park is full of seventy eighty thousand, I think the first thing that hits you really is the, when you actually run out from underneath the tunnel. Uh, it was over in the corner of the pitch in those days. Um, the crowd didn't really see you coming because they didn't have the big screens the way they have now. So it was a case of as soon as they saw the first person in the tunnel. The whole stadium would sort of erupt, uh, and that's really one of the, the big things that stuck with me. Um, and no doubt about it, at that stage you, pro you, were, you were fairly nervous, or certainly I was. I think probably you know yourself when you get into a sports when you're when you get into the actual game, really the crowd becomes something that you don't really pay much attention to, or you don't hear a lot because you're that concentrated and you're that focused on what you have to do in the pitch and the game. So really, the crowd comes out of it a lot. Um, so, but it, it was a nerve-wracking experience, and, and even the days leading up to it, the night before, things like that can can be very nervous. How did you deal with those nerves before big games? Um, I think as you probably as you got a bit older, you you, you became a little bit uh, more accustomed to it, and you managed. You were able to control your emotions. Uh, when I was younger, in the early days, it, it probably not overly well. Uh, I wouldn't have slept that well maybe the night before the game. I uh, would have woke early in the morning. Uh, so had to get up out of bed and go outside and even have, if the weather was fine, would have a walk around for five or ten minutes. But just something that I, I learned to develop or handle a little bit better as I got older. 
Uh, did you feel more pressure when you were captain in 94 compared to just playing in 91? Yes, probably a little bit. Uh, there, w there was a lot of pressure with both because in 91, Down hadn't won in All-Ireland for 20 years. Uh, but the added pressure of being the captain, uh, there's a lot more expected of you, a lot more interviews with newspapers, TVs, people wanting to find out things. Uh, and also given the fact that in 94, Down had never lost an All-Ireland final at that stage. And I really didn't want to be the only captain to ever lose an All-Ireland final because that really would just be, you'd end up a question in a quiz book, name the only down captain that lost an All-Ireland final and I really didn't want to be that person. Yeah. What made those two teams so successful in your like opinion? I suppose a combination of things, Keelan. Uh, there was an obvious high level of ability amongst all the players and indeed the whole panel. Uh, there was extreme degrees of dedication. Uh, I know nowadays sport uh, is gone probably to another level, but I think in those days the, the amount of effort and preparation and dedication that we put into it uh, was phenomenal. Uh, there was also a lot of uh, determination, commitment on the pitch. Uh, I said to you that there was a lot of ability and a lot of we, we did have great ability, but I suppose in those days Gaelic football was a little bit different than what it is now. Uh, there was maybe a more of a physical element to it in those days and certainly that those down teams in the 90s were physically able to um, maybe how can I put it look after themselves and deal with the opposition but then also had the ability to play football and go out and win the games. Um, who was the best player you played with or against in your time like in your career? Um, I suppose there's a lot of boys fall into the, a lot of category you know we've in, amongst our own team uh, you know, the likes of Greg Blaney was a, was a tremendous player throughout his career and a very, very difficult man to mark. Um, I played against the, the, maybe the greatest team ever in the, in the Kerry greats. Uh, the likes of Mike Sheehy, Pat Spillane, Jack O'Shea were fantastic footballers. You know, Bernard Flynn was another guy from me that I would have played, marked a lot of my time in my career uh, and was one of the best in, in those days. Uh, so those were all guys that were, you know, they're fantastic players that I would have played with. James McCartan, Ross Carr, all great players. And also those guys that I played against. Um, what was the best game you played in and why? Um, I think probably the, like the Ulster Finals and the All-Ireland Finals always stand out as being good games because we won. Uh, so it's always, any game you win is always a good game, even though the football mightn't have been brilliant. But certainly the All-Ireland Finals would have stood out above above a lot of games. Uh, the game against Derry in 1994 in the first round of the Ulster Championship, uh, in terms of an actual quality of the game and the intensity, uh, it's probably recognised as one of the best games there's been in Gaelic football in quite a long period of time. And also, as I said, given the fact that we went on and won, yeah. uh, even makes it better. But certainly those would probably be the standout games. Um, at what age did you finish your career as playing? And I finished my county career pr when I was about 32. Um, probably might have, have been able to play on for another year or two, but the legs were beginning to go a wee bit for that level of football. Uh, I played on with my club, Newry Shamrocks, up until my early 40s, um, whether it was the right decision or not, but I played on anyway. Because I, I just loved, enjoyed playing yeah. uh, and enjoyed playing with the boys that I was with or my club mates, guys that I'd grown up with. So uh, up into my early 42, 43 probably when I quit with the club. Um, how did you find going into management after you playing for so long? Very difficult, to be honest. Uh, I think as a lot of sportsmen will say to you, there's no substitute for actually playing the game. Uh, management maybe comes close, but it really doesn't. Uh, it's really not the same yeah. um, and it was difficult given the fact that probably only a year or two before I was actually playing with some of those players so that relationship is a little bit difficult yeah. uh, and also then uh, whenever you do go into management you, you maybe expect more off players you expect players to have the same attitude as yourself the same commitment as yourself the same determination as yourself to be the same character as yourself and you know that's not all that doesn't happen in a team game where you've got so many different types of people yeah. to deal with so it, it is a difficult transition from playing to get into management yeah. 
Um, is there anything else you'd like to achieve or see happening over the coming years in Gaelic football or in sport in general? I'd certainly like to see down in another All Ireland or two. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to happen in the in the foreseeable future. So I would certainly like to see down to be to be more competitive at senior level, but also at underage level. There's been a huge lacking of uh, success and the ability to compete at, at an underage level in down. Yeah. So I would like to see those things change and hope over the next couple of years uh, the, the county board makes the strides that it needs to do uh, for that to happen. In terms of sport in general, just to be honest, I would love to see more and more kids playing sport of, of whatever nature it is because I think it gives them, uh, gives them a great interest, uh, it teaches them a lot of great lessons that they can use in life and it also gives them great enjoyment. Yeah. Um, I know you're a PE teacher and I'm interested in becoming a PE teacher as a career when I get older. Is there any advice you could give me to become a PE teacher? Um, I think if, you, if you're going to come down the road of going into PE teaching, I think experience as many different sports as you can uh, because it's through those experiences that you learn a lot of skills that you can transfer from one sport to the next and then ultimately you know, help the children that are trying to learn new sports. Yeah. So. Be open to learn as many sports as you can and have as, as much experience of sport as you can because they'll all prove beneficial to you whenever you bring it into the classroom. Um, what was the best advice you were ever given, not just for PE teaching, just like for in general? Like? Advice in general? Um, I suppose I don't know if I could say all of these on camera or not. Um, I suppose in sport, to be honest, uh, the, the best advice I got when I, when I was very, very young was to make sure that if you're going to if you want to achieve something in sport, you're going to need to put in the effort and the work and you're going to have to give up the time and you're going to have to make up sacrifices if you want to achieve things. And I suppose, to be honest, Keelan, that probably applies to any aspect of life, whether it's your sporting career or your job. Uh, you're going to have to give up and make those sacrifices if you want to reach the top. Um, and also to try, if you can, to help people along the way. Um, what advice would you give to young people looking to achieve a career in sport? I think it's great that if they go into sport in the first place, uh, it's not a case that everybody can reach the top or everybody can win medals or achieve great things, but that's not what it's all about. Yeah. Yes, that is an element of it, and if it happens, it's great. But to go into sport because you love it and you like it and you want to do it, and when you do that there, then give it as much effort as you can. And regardless of whether you win things or reach certain levels, I think... You can, you'll be able to look back at your sporting career then and say that you enjoyed it, you made great friends, you had great times, uh, you'll have memories that you'll have for the rest of your life and probably friendships as well. Thanks for taking the time out to be interviewed tonight. Um, it has been very interesting hearing about your life and how you won two all our medals representing your county. Not at all, Kevin. Thanks very much. Thanks. Well done. Thank you.